Welcome to another episode of Drunk Guys on Chick Flicks, the podcast that probably shouldn't quit its day job. Hmm. I'm your host, Matt, and with me, as always, is your co-host, Garrett. Hi, I'm Garrett. When you say probably, sh- are you alluding to something? I'm just that? saying, like, not yet. Just like, maybe, but like, not yet. I not now? Gave my two weeks notice. This oh, seemed, oh no. This seemed lucrative. Oh I, no. Oh God. You were wrong. Oh God. <laughs> um... What are we watching today, Garrett? We're going to watch The Sweetest Thing because I won the bet last week and this seemed like a good one. I don't know. Did it seem like a good one or did it seem like you had no idea and you found a beer that matched up real well? That's why it seemed so good. It seems so good, baby. (laughs) So we're going to talk about the beer, I guess, real quick. So uh, uh, I picked The Sweetest Thing because I thought of uh, Six Point Brewing's Sweet Action. So that's what we're going to drink today. It's a fine brew. It's a fine brew. It's a really good beer. It's like a... The side of the box says it's undefinable. It's it's a, it's like a it's, gold, it's a golden hoppy ale, but it's it's really good. It's not like it doesn't taste like the other golden ales we've had, like Bond Ambition and stuff like that. It's not quite yeah. that way. Anyway, so uh, you know we both had this beer shitload. I'm pretty excited to drink a couple of them as we go. But sure. it seemed totally appropriate for this movie. Yeah, so when did this movie come out again, Matt? In 2002. And who does it star? It stars Cameron Diaz, Christina Applegate. Selma Blair. Those are like the big three. Right? Those, those are the big three. It's about three women. I, I mean, it's just like about the friendship of three women. I think. I mean, have you seen this? I've, I've seen this, but like a long time ago. I've seen bits and pieces of it. I remember seeing like kind of raunchy shit. But yeah, I it's remember in it's what vulgar. Context. And you know what? I actually, and it's not because I don't care for vulgar things. I don't care for this movie. <laughs> I don't remember it. I have no real opinion of it. And honestly, I'm kind of excited uh, to see, you know, how like raunchy, because it's described as a raunchy movie. So I'm excited to see yeah. how raunchy it actually is. Uh, it also stars Thomas Jane and Jason Bateman. I love both of them. Yeah, they're great. I'm, uh, I'm Tom Jane. Yeah, well. It's, <laughs> um, no, it's, it's really, it's, it's all right. I'm, I'm Tom Jane. I'm, to, I'm, I'm Tom Jane. I'm Tom Jane. And Jason Bateman. We fucking love Jason Bateman. Of course. In everything. Even bad stuff that Jason Bateman's in, love Jason Bateman. Of course. He's the Bateman. Yeah, you ever see the change up with him and Ryan Reynolds? I actually love that movie. I I understand it's a bad movie. Yeah, it's a bad I movie. love that movie. I like it but too, but it's a bad movie. But also stars Leslie Mann and Olivia Munn, uh, not True. Munn, Olivia Wilde. Come on. Yeah, it might just be carried by the cast. It's not a good movie, but I like it. It's a good movie. Uh, I mean, okay, it's fun. It's not a good movie. He's in that movie, The Kingdom, Jamie Fox. Also, no, you I've see never that? seen that. It's is like, it like an action movie? It's like a fine action movie. Yeah. It's weirdly political, but also, I, you know, I don't. Really, I like it more because he's in it. I don't really buy Jamie Fox. He was good in that uh, in Ray. I liked him in Ray. Wasn't he in that movie Collateral with uh, the Tom Cruise? Yes. Like, yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. That's actually an awesome movie. Yeah, that's but he was movie. also in you know Amazing Spider-Man Two: colon, Rise of Electro. Don't you know he's Electro? Okay, so spot it, Spotty Pass. Spotty Pass. Spotty Pass. All right. Uh, directed by Roger Cumble, who directed Cruel Intentions One and Two, Just Friends, which is another movie I actually really enjoy. Right. Um, and then he directed this movie called Furry Vengeance, which I believe starred um, Brendan Frazier. Frazier. Fra- Frazier. Yeah. Right. It was a horrible, horrible, horrible movie, and he was relegated to television after that. What is that movie? About? I don't even know. I don't remember I that think movie. he plays like a park ranger, and like all the animals are mad and then like attack him or something. I'm sure in the end he becomes the good guy because there's some big business or something. I don't know. Is it a kid's movie? I believe it's a kid's movie. I have never even heard of it. Well, I just know that after that he did not direct another feature film. Wow. Okay. No. Um, and it's written by Nancy M. Pim- Pimento? P- Pimento? Pimento Love. Pimento Love. Uh, and this is her only major film writing credit. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Oh, that's, that's, that's fine, I guess. Um, so this is... The story of a girl who well, cried a river and drowned the whole world. <laughs> this is another, this is her second Cameron Diaz movie, right? She was just in The Other Man, right? So far? Or The Other Woman, rather. So no. far? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Is this? No! Oh. She's also in, was it? No, no, that's the one. That's the one I'm thinking right. of. I was like, the she, one where she's the big business woman. No, that's so the same she's thing. She's in The Other Woman. Yes. Uh, Selma have, Blair. Selma Blair, also in Legally Blonde. Yes. Right? Um, Christina Applegate's first appearance, I think, for us. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, I don't know. I don't know who. I uh, vaguely the, the main character is Cameron Diaz, right? And so much so that, and, and we're going to jump into trivia real quick. That the production was halted of, on this movie so that uh, Cameron Diaz could finish um, filming Gangs of New York and Vanilla Sky before she wanted to start this. So you know, she did two ostensibly good movies, and then this. You know, I've never seen Vanilla Sky. Uh, I actually never have either, but I've heard it's pretty good. Gangs of New York, Gangs of New York like, is incredible. I, I love so. Gangs. I know a lot of people don't really. I know love it. a lot of people don't like it. It's very I love long. It. It's very sure, long. 
But come on, Daniel Day Lewis in that movie is fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, and when the when the credits roll at the end, or it's Sunday Bloody Sunday. God, oh, great. So good. God damn. Um. All right, and then what? What else? Uh, trivia wise, what else? Yeah. Um. The writer of this movie appears very early in the club scene as quote unquote vomit girl. So oh. that's good. Look for vomit girl. Filmography. Vomit girl. Vomit girl. That's her only that's, credit. That's it. That's all she's got. Great. And apparently, a third of the budget of this movie. I'm sorry, a third of the $50 million budget of this movie was for Cameron Diaz's uh, salary, which is sad because the movie only made $68 million. Didn't lose money. My. Didn't lose money. Sure. Although, that's, I, a, that's a lot of Diaz money. That's that sweet, sweet Diaz money. You gotta, you gotta imagine that um, Applegate and Selma Blair weren't happy about it. They probably weren't really friends off screen. Right. So this is before Legally Blonde, right? Legally Blonde was 03, I believe? Yes. So this is before that. Is it? I guess it's before Hellboy too. But right? I believe it's after Cruel Intentions, which was kind of like Selma sure. Blair's. Yeah, I think Cruel Intentions outing. came out when I was like in middle school, and I remember thinking it was basically porn because I was like twelve. I think everyone thought it was kind of porn at that yeah. time. Yeah. Um. Shit. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Good. For, I mean, good for her. Hey, Matt, what, she got hers. What's one third of fifty? No, you did this. Why? What is it, Matt? Answer the question. Half of fifty. Um, that's not how thirds work and you know it <laughs> it's never how thirds work <laughs> i don't know it's like 13 13 know, million I is it 13 math is so hard i think it's 13 math is so hard it's, it's so hard i'm so uh, mad <laughs> all right is there any other trivia or is that kind of it no that... i actually the trivia page on uh, imdb for this is very scarce sparse okay yeah, not I mean, scarce it's there you can uh, find it so i feel like uh when you bring this movie up um a lot of girls seem to really love this movie. Really love this movie, yeah. And I'm blown away because, like, I don't know. I just, like, I don't. I feel like the greater audience don't really care for it. But I mean, we'll find out later. But Yeah, I'm really excited to see, or eager to see, rather, the uh, like the, the Rowdy Tomatoes later for it. Because I, cause I remember it being, like, considered a bad movie. But, again, like, it's so many women in my life. Like throughout the years, like all, like most female friends that I've ever had have been like, oh, oh, the sweetest thing, sure. Any female that I've told about this podcast was like, you have to do the sweetest thing, and I yeah. was like, why? Well, here we are, out of um, desperation, 16. <laughs> with, out of sixteen uh, episodes, <laughs> I had to just to match it with a beer name. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, what are we gonna do when we run out of beers? Well, luckily, the uh, craft beer bubble is like still like still expanding. Yeah, it hasn't God, popped. Yet. It hasn't popped even a little bit. So I think uh, you're right. We could probably say the name of a movie right now, and like next week, they'll be like, "We can be going forever," and I plan to. What? Oh, I no. thought you were saying the name of a movie. No, I'm just saying we could be going forever. Yeah, and ever. Uh, anyway. What are we, what's the bet? Okay. What so, are we betting on this So week? the bet, um, I had a couple ideas and I know we like kind of do this one often. Yeah. But I think yeah. you don't know the answer to it. I don't know the answer to it. And the, the IMDB synopsis was roughly, there's like a, a guy from Cameron Diaz's past. A girl finds, uh, she is forced to educate herself on the etiquette of wooing the opposite sex. Etiquette? When she... I said, etiquette? I said etiquette. You did not. I'm pretty sure I said etiquette. Start again. Yes, sir. Um, a girl finds she's forced to educate herself on the etiquette of wooing the opposite sex when she finally meets Mr. Right. Oh, really? I thought it was like she reconnects with someone from her past and like... Isn't that what... Dude, I don't know. I'm reading the top headline from IMDb. All right, whatever. So we're aware that there's a Mr. Right, right? Yeah. The bet's going to be... Does she end up with Mr. Right or does she not? Because I'm imagining a scenario where maybe she like does all this work to like woo this guy and like in doing so finds out he's like not worth wooing. Or maybe there's another guy. It's Tom Jane, man. He's always worth wooing. Oh, well, I mean, do you want it to be whether or not she ends up with Jason Bateman or Tom Jane? I don't We don't even know who Jason Bateman plays in this movie. I don't know. I certainly don't. Uh, I kind of love when Jason Bateman plays a douchebag because he does it real well. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He's a, he's a believable asshole. Although yeah. I think in real life he's... It's bold ten- strategy, con. Bold strategy. Oh, he's not an asshole. No, it's just hysterical. dumb. So what do you what do you want? You want to do that? You want to do... Uh... We'll just find out whether she actually ends up with Mr. Wright or not. So whether or not she ends up with the guy she's trying to woo. Yes. Not like who she ends up with. Because you might end up with someone else, but that doesn't mean... It's... So the person that is set as like the guy who is Mr. Wright, who she's trying to woo, whether or not she ends up with him. You sure. lost last week. You bet first. Go ahead. Um, I'm going to say she does. 
I'm going to say she doesn't because I'm anticipating a scenario. I, there's really only one option for no, you. No, but I, I'm saying even if you weren't going to say that, like I, I was still going to say, like if I bet first, I still would have said she doesn't. He's winking right now. I'm imagining a scenario. <laughs> I'm imagining a scenario where she like realizes he's like not it and then goes for like. Mr. Mr. Brother, like Mr. Plan B, best friends, brother, or something, right? Something, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Yes. I get you, I get you, I get you. All right, so that'll be the bed. Okay, uh, we're gonna crack some sweet action, it's fucking delicious. We're gonna get that sweet action. It's only five percent, too, so I can't, I can't imagine that we'll be um, too toasty after this. But uh, I'm gonna have other beers. Oh, my, there are other beers. Nope, not for you, <laughs> not for you. <laughs> Just for me. So if you're going to watch The Sweetest Thing, if you haven't already seen it, pause us here. If not, we're sorry for whatever happens next. And we will see you on the other side. And we're back. And we're back. Okay. I... Broad strokes. Go ahead. Uh, okay. I had a complicated relationship with this movie because there were points um, where I really wanted to like it. Like they were down on it. But there were points that it was funny and I was like fucking ready. But overall, I really, really, I really didn't like this movie. And it wasn't in the same way as some of these other movies that we've had that like I've just kind of disliked because they were flat or whatever. The thing I kept saying to Matt throughout this entire movie was... Funny parts, but so many misfires. Like so many fucking like, oh man! Like they 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 thought that would land. Yeah, like, I had a much less complicated relationship with this movie. I really didn't like it. You laughed. I laughed a handful of times. That doesn't mean I liked it. There were definitely funny parts. So I, I mean, I'm not disagreeing with that's you. That's the credit I'll give this movie. Is that like there 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 was definitely some like pretty legitimately funny comedy. Yeah, but there were so many, and you just said it. There were so many fucking mismarks. Like it, they just they tried real hard, and they just and they swung for the bleachers, and it just did not fucking pan out for them. Yeah, I um, um, I had a hard time. Yeah, I don't know. Do you want to do three sentences, or do you want to do beer? Let's do the let's do the beer. Yeah, I mean we'll do the beer. I mean we kind of discussed it earlier. It was it was the uh, not single cut six point six point sweet action. Yeah, it's very drinkable. It's like, great. It's I, really good beer. It's not my favorite it's light. six point. It's I like light. that it's light. It is light. Uh, on a weekday night. On a school night. Um, it doesn't, you know, it's 5%, so it's not It doesn't like insist a, upon itself. Too much to dare. <laughs> <laughs> Too much to dare. Uh, so... I mean, it's, yeah, it's light. It's super drinkable. It's only no. 5%, so it doesn't necessarily knock you on your ass. Great. Um, it's not my favorite six point. Uh, well, I mean, Bengali is great. Bengali's and uh, resin's really good, too. Resin is also really good. I actually, there's not a single six point that I dislike at all. Like, I, even Crisp, is, and I, I'm not a Pilsner guy, but Crisp is really the good. Crisp is really good. Um, but good. Super good. Glad we drank it. Um, you know, nothing out of the ordinary, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Three, do you, do you need three? Let's do three sentences. Three this time. Ready? Okay. Do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? It's up to you. Make the call. <clears throat> Co-host. Well, now you're going first. I meant it in like a, a very shared, like we're both co-hosts. It didn't this. sound like, it sounded like the power was coming from you downhill to me. Well, I, I do As consider if you myself were the like, host, and, and you are just just the co-host, relegated to power bottom, power, host. power, power, power host? co-host. Fuck off. <laughs> um, I'll just, go first. Fuck you. You know what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Cameron Diaz is a young professional woman in young. San Francisco. Uh, who lives with two friends who uh, like to live the single lifestyle. One. One. After um, years of kind of developing a reputation as kind of like a man-eater, sort of like, you know, she kind of breaks a lot of hearts. She's a heartbreaker, right? Um, after years of developing real that. real ball buster. And kind of like running through guys or whatever else. Sure. She meets a guy at the club who she thinks she's really into. Period. Two. Two. Um, after he tells her that his brother's getting married Does, three hours sorry. away um, that we, that coming weekend, 
she tries to track him down at that wedding to discover that he is in fact getting married. Um, and then the uh, romance unfolds and ultimately they find the truth in themselves. That's it. Are you happy with that? Kill me. <laughs> um, okay. That wasn't bad. I guess it was fine. It I mean, was, it's not, it wasn't wrong. It wasn't my best work. It wasn't wrong. It wasn't my best work. I <laughs> thought. All right. Three sentences go. Um, perpetual party girl. Um, tries to propagate the the party lifestyle to her friends, period, one. By doing so, uh, I'm sorry, in doing so, she runs into a guy that, that I don't know, that she likes or whatever. He seems genuine. He seems nice. Um, and she, I ta- hope she, she, she take, uh, kind, fine, kind of, and in doing so, she finds a guy that she likes and... <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, realizes that maybe the party lifestyle isn't all there is, period. Um, she attempts to track down Guy only to find that he is getting married and, um, becomes down on herself, but he actually doesn't end up getting married and in the long run they end up together, period three. Hey, neither were good. That was a rough number three for you. They always are. That was a bit of a three area over there okay. for you well, on that last sentence. One and two were great, though. One and two were fine. No, they were great. Three. I felt really good about two specifically. Three, you finished the sentence. I really and just threw if, shit against the wall. If you were writing it down, there would have been a period, and then you put the word butt in there. Hey, to try to hey bud, do you want to listen to your three back? Because it is long. Yeah, fine. Yeah, okay. I wish there was like a like the rewind sound that we could insert here, like and then like play my back and yeah. then have me be really upset after. I can it. edit it in if you want. Oh, perfect. Okay, we're gonna edit in right here, and we're back, and we're back. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and that, neither one of us necessarily love this movie. There, I mean, there's a lot to talk about. I guess I don't know. Well, let me let me start with something because you said that. A, a group of young women were living together. They're not that young. They're they're 28 years old, and I'm I'm not like. Does I'm it not, say that? The, the oh, 20? at one point she says she's 28 years old. Oh, okay. And I'm assuming they're all the same age because they've been best friends forever. For yeah, lifelong friends, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um. So like, there's nothing wrong. I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying there's nothing. There's something wrong with being single when you're that age. I'm. It's just more that they don't really act like 28 year olds. Like 28 year olds that I know are all, all kind of have like. A head on their shoulders. They act like they're fucking in high school. It, so I, I do. So I want to. I don't want to cut this far ahead in the movie, but it goes to your point of like the, like the, the kind of like immaturity, like the, the like too youthful kind of vibe that they're yeah. giving off. Yes. There is a scene when they are driving, right, and then they get gross in the car or whatever, and then they pull they get up to so the, gross to the truck stop, right. Yeah. That rest stop scene is like you're talking about like the glory uh, hole and all that. Well, we're getting there, okay. but <laughs> that that rest stop. Wait, what's a glory hole? You know what? I'll ask again. So, uh, <laughs> what's a glory? So, hole? like that rest stop scene. I kept going back and forth between like, are they supposed to be teenagers? Are they on glue? Is it like a, <laughs> are they huffing yeah, fucking are paint? They fucking like where there was the, was there a sock in the fucking uh, tailpipe and they were just like fucking like slowly dying in the car. I don't know what the explanation was, but I feel like a sock is porous. I feel like the CO2 would get out through the sock. If no, you no, like you just like an apple in no, there, you that's sit, a different no, story. You sit in your garage, a sock does the trick. A sock? Yeah. All right. Well, if you sit in the garage with all the doors closed, every, any nothing, it doesn't matter. You don't need anything in the tailpipe. Oh. These are not lessons, kids. Oh, you don't say kids. Don't These are not lessons, adults. Thank you. So they go to the rest stop and they like go to the ladies' room to like get cleaned up or whatever. And there's someone who's like firing out a Cadillac from a butthole. <laughs> like it's a lot. And I'm not. I'm not being. Crude. He's not squeamish. Either. I'm basically paraphrasing what was said. Like, she's like, it feels like I'm shooting out a Cadillac. And we looked at each other like, ooh. Oh, oh no. Oh, God. Oh, God. So they go into the men's room where there are no men. They look around and they're like, it's like they're on an alien planet. Yeah. Right? It might as well have been like the first encounter so of a fucking alien. Cameron planet. Diaz goes into ooh. the stall, reads a poem. 
uh, while Christina Applegate is like squatting into the urinal, which doesn't look like it would work. Or like, comfortable. Like, yeah, like, like you'd probably get way gross. Why would, gross why would you just not wait for your why friend would, to get out of wait the Wait like a minute. Like, yeah. Wait one minute. She uh, didn't seem like she was in that much of a rush. Cameron Diaz is in the stall and she sees like uh she sees a like graffiti that says follow the yellow brick road and it follows her it like she follows she's like and while she's following this like little arrow thing that leads her to this uh, portrait of a dog she's like follow the yellow brick road and she's like follow the yellow brick road and she's like follow the yellow brick road and I was like is she on drugs? Are, this, are there drugs? You actually, I remember you actually Was saying, fucking, like, she, did they take fucking drugs? Did they take fucking drugs? Because it's either like you're a child in that moment, and she's like walking along the Elbert Road with her fingers on the wall well, of a wor- men's room at a rest stop. It gets worse once she gets to the portrait of the dog, and, and she's, she's like, like, what do you have in your mouth there, pup? You look just like Snoopy Boo 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 Boo, my, my puppy from when I was a Poo Poo Doo Poo. And there, there is a drilled out hole in the dog's mouth. And what did you, what, what did you think was going to come She's like, what do you have in your mouth there? What do you have in your mouth? And she goes over to the the hole that is in the like drilled in the wall where the dog's mouth would be. I take umbrage with this scene. And fucking, and you just you see a dick for a split second. It's hilarious because the he the guy in the background you just hear go surprise surprise in like a fucking <laughs> Mickey Mouse voice. Oh, surprise! And I I it'll it doesn't show oh. this but it alludes that it like comes through the hole and pokes her in the eye, which is incredibly crude and. Yeah. Rid- ridiculous for this fucking movie but also i take umbrage with this because like they're in the men's bathroom where is that hole going to what was that hole where did it go what like what was that hole though? i don't know like it went through the wall with the plumbing yeah but is there like is that like it's, a it's thing a, it, it, shut up it's a it's called a glory hole <laughs> what, what? sequa <laughs> matt you're telling me that this is a thing in real life okay let's move on Anyway, you're disgusting. You're all disgusting. <laughs> all like, of ya. All right, so I mean just to pull and at that during pull while, back the curtain. While she gets <laughs> poked in the eye with a penis, she um uh, Christina Applegate <laughs> is like pulling like the toilet the urinal won't flush, right? Which like the original like the only thought there is like, all right, fucking leave it. It's also under her, dude, under her breath the whole time while uh, uh, Cameron Diaz is like reading the poem and whatever. She's just like, I'm peeing on my hands. Oh, God, I peed on my oh, hands. Oh, it's on my hands. Oh, no. But like if you're in a urinal and if you're I mean, if you're anyone, but if you're especially if you're a dude and the urinal doesn't flush, what do you do? You just leave. You just fucking walk but away. But if you're a woman, like, I'm, not, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm assuming that if you're a woman and you're in a stall, if if the stall doesn't flush, you just fucking you leave. Also just fucking leave. Right. So like if you are a woman peeing backwards upside down into a urinal and then it doesn't you know, I flush. was a little impressed I got it I... but let's say it works sure if it doesn't flush and it's not going she is not a plumber it makes it very clear that she's a lawyer she, many times she wears lawyer clothes like all to the, the time bar, to the restaurant like to the gym uh it's very apparent that she's an attorney and not a plumber so why the fuck are you going to concern yourself? Rattle and she, around with she it. She gets like splashed in the face. Wait, I don't know. Whatever. That's just like. Well, no, no. Not splash in the face. Drenched. The thing totally fucking drenched. erupts like fire it's hosed. goddamn a fire hose. Yeah, she yeah. gets fire hosed by this thing. But And then Cameron Diaz runs into the fire hose, which is right. nonsensical. Right. Uh, no, but I mean, again, I didn't mean to get deep to a but that was like such a scene where it was like, is this glaring immaturity, terrible writing, or are they on drugs? Like, I don't and know. And here's, what... the, here's the answer to that. Yes. Wait, I don't know. Which All one three. Oh, okay. At least it seemed that way. Right. I'll tell you what. It's definitely terrible writing because the writer of this movie, I forgot her name, did not write anything like theatrically after this. So people were pissed. Right. Um yeah, so I mean that was that was a thing with me with the movie generally. Sure. Um, movie takes place in Frisco. Don't call it that. They don't care for that. They don't care for that. When you say they, I mean the San Franciscans. You mean Fris- Friskans? No. Fris- no one's ever meant that. Friscon, Friscon, the Frisconi people. The Friscoan. Thank you. You're welcome. So. Uh, it takes place in San Francisco, and just like all these movies we watch that take place in New York, it makes San Francisco look fucking beautiful. I've never I been mean, to San Francisco, it, it, but like most of these, most movies try to make the city that they. I mean, unless they're supposed to be like ski, ski CV, like um, gritty, yeah, gritty movies. Gritty they try CV. to make the movie that they're in look good, which is great. I mean, that's a nice thing. But it like makes you want to go to. You know what other movie I've makes you want to go to San Francisco? I've been to San Francisco. It is not that nice, right? No, no offense. I'm you, sorry. You know what other movie makes me want to go to San Francisco? That should be on the list. Mrs. Doubtfire. Princess Diaries. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. I've never seen Princess Diaries, but I know Mrs. Doubtfire takes place. something where they get into an accident with like a trolley car or something. That's all I remember. We got to watch that. We're going to watch that. That's going to be really, really soon. Okay. Okay. As soon as I can find a beer that I can then randomly think of to match with Princess Diaries, we're going to do that one. It's going to be so good. Princess Uh, Diamond. No, I got nothing. Move one. I was burping. I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm an animal. You're disgusting. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I just really didn't. I, I didn't. I know this movie's crude, and like, I guess I don't really have a problem with crudity. It's just that it's like tastelessly crude. If that's a possibility, it is. It is often tastelessly crude. I have a spectacular example of it being hilariously crude. Go ahead. So they like. Go ahead. The the beginning premise is that. Um, um, Selma Blair. No, I'm sorry. Selma Blair is like the heartbroken friend, right? She's been dumped. She's in the, the hapless friend. And uh, um, uh, Cameron Diaz and Christina Applegate. Christina Applegate are like, we got to take her out, like cheer up, or whatever. So they Christina go out. Applegate's like the put together one. Selma Blair is the hapless one, and 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 what's her name? Cameron Diaz Cameron... is like kind of like the heartbreaker, the like... mess. I don't know. I think I think Christina Applegate is just like the more confident one, like okay. is how I kind of saw fair. it. Uh, but I saw I saw the Cameron Diaz character and the Christina Applegate character is very very similar. Just Christina Applegate kind of like was more confident. I had her shit together. Doing. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but like in the beginning, they're like, "Oh, we got to take Selma Blair out and like cheer her up." Whatever. And, then, and then they were bad friends to her the entire night. They just danced by themselves while she like kind of sulked, cried on <laughs> that disgusting sad. fucking waterbed in the middle of the club. Anyway, Selma Blair ends up going home with a guy that night. Like she hooks up with somebody. And, Good for her. She and earned it. The next day, they're gonna meet for lunch, and she has a bag, like a paper bag with like a dress in it, which she apparently had borrowed from I think Christina Applegate. It was Applegate, yes. And they're like, oh, you just have to go to the dry cleaner? What do you have to go to the dry cleaner for? And she's like, oh, I just have a stain on your dress. I'm so sorry. And she's like, they're like, what kind of stain? And they realize it's it, semen. It's it, like, it's, it's a cum-cums. lot. Of, it's a lot of semen. It's a lot of cum From the hookup yeah. she had the night before. And first thing, hilarious. <laughs> they start hilarious. They start throwing it back and forth, teasing her. And there's like dried semen all over that dress. Yeah, I'm not into that. It, I'm a guy and I'm still like, get it away. Hey, Matt, are you a guy? I'm a guy. I'm a guy. Are you a drunk guy? I'm, I'm a drunk guy watching, hey, watching a chick flick. There you go. Yeah. Um, but like, I, any, I feel like any normal people, any other human beings on the planet would be like, get that the fuck away from me. That's fucking disgusting. I don't, I don't want like, it to touch me. That is fucking like. Get it away. I don't want. I feel like people don't want semen around them like that. 90% like, of like the time? Ever. <laughs> Like ever, like ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah, you're right. Male, I left it off a nine percent of the time. Male, female, like it's a horrifying nightmare thing to have semen around you, especially if it didn't come from you. So, <laughs> right? Like, oh my god! No, like, you're not you wrong. Imagine? You're absolutely right. So they're like throwing you back and forth, like ha 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 ha. Yeah, that's the other ha, thing. Ha, they're, they're playing keep away with it, and and she's trying to get. I'd it be back. like, cool. I'd be like, keep it. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Oh. That's yours now. I'm going to go get fucking lunch. Cool. Keep that disgusting thing. Uh, so then she goes, the only really funny, really crude, hilarious thing, right? Selma Blair goes to the dry cleaner. Sure. It's like, sure. it's the dry cleaner she's used her entire life, apparently. He's like, how's your mother? How's your grandmother? How's because things? of course. And she's just trying to like leave it and bounce. And then he's like, what is this? You got any stains on this? What is this? I can get it out much better if I know what it is. Do you know what it is? And she's like, I think it's soda. I don't know. I gotta go. And then a field trip walks in. A field trip of of third graders with her third grade teacher. And then her very, very Irish uh, priest walks in. Who has been her priest her entire life. And is going to dinner with her parents that night. And like the, the dry cleaner guy is like, He's like scratch. It shows him scratch at it, and it's like crusty and disgust. It was like it was so disgusting. But I have to tell you, in that that one instance of it being horrifyingly disgusting and crude, I did laugh a lot. Like um, hey, I, I, good I, for you. I bud. got the gigs for like a second. I got the gigs. Do you know what immediately followed that pretty funny scene though? The worst scene of any movie I've ever seen in my entire Maybe life. The worst scene I've ever seen in a film. It almost. No, I'm sorry. It was. Less good than Ducky's weird dance to a little tenderness. Okay, first of all, we disagreed about the Ducky dance number because I thought it was fine. You thought it was charming. Not fine. You thought it was charming. And you hated it. I hated it. Okay. So they're they're at a Chinese food restaurant. Which, first of all, I mean, be respectful to the people around you because, like, 
if you're at a restaurant, you don't want to hear everyone cackling, right? From, right? Right. right, right, right. If someone is that disrespect, like loud next to you, I'm just mad. Like, I'm excuse gonna, me. Can I'm I move gonna, my table? I'm just gonna, can I move my can table, please? Kindly leave. Uh, so, kindly leave. so they're like, how, like, how was your hookup last night? Was it good? It was like, you know, how was his penis? And they're like, so, how was his penis? Yeah, they really are. They're like, you know, what was girth, length, whatever? Did you tell him what we is always girth, tell them? Is girth really the first question people have about penises? It was certainly the first so, question in this film. I am. Upset. Hey, hey, bud. I just said upset. Just let's just. I just said upset. We're gonna, I didn't say why I was upset. I just move on. Move on. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so they're asking all these penis questions, and they're like, "Oh, did you tell them what we always tell them?" Yeah, of course. Like, and then they allude to the fact that they always tell they the lie to men. Guy, yeah, they like every man. Every man they hook up with, they say like, "Oh, you've got the biggest penis I've ever seen. It's beautiful, right?" Which leads to. A fucking dance number with uplighting and a synth playing in the background and the crowd joins in singing and it's like a solid three minute like full song. Like that's like how long pop songs are. It's like too big for in here, too big for in here, too big for in here. It's set to the tune of um, uh, what's it called? Like it's kind of set to the tune of like I'm too sexy. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, and the like the recurring like line is. Um, my body is a movie and your penis is the star. And it was like, it just felt like a lot. It was really long. It was like so out of place. Like I hate when movies that are not musicals or something like do shit like this. And there was no acknowledgement of, well, the there was, a, there was a huge break. Of it. There was a huge breaking of the fourth wall. Like there was like, they were all singing to camera and dancing at the camera. Right. And like, yeah. and it was at this point that I said that this must have been like the low point of every single one of their fucking careers. And it's sad because Cameron Diaz was in Charlie's angels Two full throttle. No, that's an American classic. No, it's not. Um, you know what I'd be really curious about after this? What? To see if Charlie's Angels' uh, Roddy Tomatoes score is lower than this. Roddy Tomatoes? Oh, you know what I mean. Anyway, the the entire scene was a fucking a fever dream nightmare shit show. It was. I, again, I hated it. I wrote again, am I on glue? I, I gotta tell you, it, it, it might have been the thing that really made the movie unwatchable to me. Like, if, if the scene hadn't been in the movie, I might have been fine. No, I mean, I, there were a lot of other things that I was kind of like, Ugh, can this end? Can like, this be over can now? This end? Uh, yeah, that, so that song was like really long. Um, and unbearable. My, my body's a movie and your penis is a star. I literally wrote, am I on glue? Like three times during this. I wish it was time stamped. <laughs> so I can show you. I'm looking at your notes right now. I'm, it looks like the scrawlings of a fucking madman. Yeah. It says Kaiser Soze like a, a thousand bunch. times. Yeah. <laughs> Who is Kaiser Soze? Who is Kaiser Soze? Who is Kaiser? Soze? <laughs> you're a real piece of shit. I feel like you're the piece of shit. Anyway, um, what am I? I don't know. What else is there to say about this movie? I mean, there's plenty. I it just I I can't. I can't stand any of the girls, and at least in the beginning, they all seem immature and like. Like the, again, the 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 restaurant scene. I'm just like, oh, shut up! You're being loud. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't like hate them. I'm not the saying beginning. I hate them. I just like. I don't know. It seems overt. Like all of it's just so overt. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, someone we didn't touch upon yet. Jason Bateman. Oh, I was gonna say. I was gonna talk about. I was. Trying to get to Jason Bateman and Thomas Jane. Tom okay. Tom Jane. I'm uh, I'm Tom Jane. He's Tom Jane. Um, I love both of them. Right. I really did. I mean, Bateman is clearly a oh, dickhole. He's, he's a skadoosh, yeah. but he's fucking like... He's hilarious. He's very funny, and I just fucking like Jason Bateman. I just is do. It doesn't matter. I don't like his character. His character is a monster. And he's it. a garbage person. Although his character is so much more bearable once you realize his character is not the one getting married. Yeah, you're right. He's, Did you he, notice that? Like yeah. leading up to it, you're like, "Oh, what a fucking asshole!" Yeah, for sure. And then once you realize it's Tom Jane who was supposed to get married, and and Jace May was just this like single, probably for a reason, younger brother, or, yeah. <laughs> like it's a little bit 
it's like, a little hate, bit more tolerable. A little bit yeah, less. for sure. Because the whole time you're watching, you're like, he's getting married? He's such a dick. He's like, who would do this? Can't tie me down like this. This fucking blows my mind. What am I fucking... I don't know. It's, it was a lot. It was too much. Um, speaking of the two of them, can we talk about the scene where they're at the driving range wearing hilarious outfits? Yeah. Tom Jane's wearing a bathrobe and Jason Bateman's wearing a fucking tie dye, like golf, like old golf hat, old timey golf hat. Yeah. It was something. Uh, Tom Jane's also wearing a matching cowboy hat that Is matches he? his bathrobe. I didn't even notice that. So the funny thing is they're talking about like, wow, man, getting, getting married is a trip, right? Whoa, commitment, 50 years with the same woman, blah, 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 blah. Their grandpa's behind them. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, best time of my life was with this woman in 1930, long before I met your grandmother, blah, blah, blah. No, blah, no, blah. not long before I met your grandmother. He just starts telling a story. And Tom Jane goes, oh, I bet you miss grandma a lot. And he goes, fuck grandma. And I was, I was taken back. He was. I was taken Garrett back. Was floored. By it. it was, it seemed so. Cr- fuck grandma. So crude and mean. And then the best part is that Jason Bateman, I think it was Jason Bateman, was like, hey, be nice. <laughs> Yes, that did happen. Yeah. Uh, but he was like, wow, he's so viciously like, yeah. fuck grandma. Uh, yeah. It's funny yeah. when old people are mean. That's basically what it boils down to. Like, think about um, Wedding Crashers when when the old woman's like screaming and yelling. Everyone's like, oh, she's so sweet. Yeah. And then they die. That's Ella. what old people do. <laughs> That's what they do. They, they die. die. Not you, though. Uh, what, let me see. Rest stop scene, terrible. Yeah, that uh, really upset me. Changing, uh, changing like in a parked car area to uh, if you like pina coladas and kind of dancing at each other. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, and then they call Summer Blair's job. They're just me. I feel like they're just bad friends. Well, Summer Blair. It was like, also just bad, bad just, friends. It was also just kind of disjointed. Like it didn't really make sense to me that they like, cut over to Summer Blair's job. Yeah, and like what they were doing change. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it was yeah. fucking weird. I don't know. And the guy sh- shows up to Summer Blair's job in like his like fucking heffalump suit or whatever. In it was. His hilarious like purple elephant with get wings. Up with wings. Yeah. And he's like, hey, I work in the children's house. And she's like, do me upstairs. And that we, was. That, we gon' fuck. That was actually, I did laugh at that. When they were, when they're like uh, having sex in the, in like the dressing room and he's in the costume and he's like, he's talking while they're having sex. And he's like, I think we really connect. I really like you a lot. And she just like pulls his mask down. I, I actually laughed a lot more when she fell out of the room and like her coworker standing over her talking about something. And you look in the background and he's just covering his eyes the whole time going, oh, no. In the costume, yeah, yeah that was funny. really good. I did, I did think that was pretty funny. Um, let's see. Oh, when they're when they're road tripping down to Somerset to like meet to Peter where as well. Somerset. They say it a lot. Yeah, they do. We're going to Somerset. Somerset. Hey, you ever been to Somerset? He's in Somerset. That's halfway across the state. There are no Jews in Somerset. Oh, they do make a point of saying. <laughs> he's like, that doesn't make sense. There are no Jewish people in Somerset. Uh, that's the dad later on because they they're like, are we at the right bar mitzvah? Because yeah. they like get caught or whatever. At the he's like, this wedding. makes no sense. Um, the uh, when they're road tripping down and something drops down on the floor and Cameron Diaz's face is in like uh, Christina Applegate's lap and it looks like she's going down on her. And, and there's that dude on the motorcycle this biker riding next to him. is like really into it and then he crashes his bike and Matt just looks at me and it's like, oh, they killed a the guy. Oh wow, look, dead. Oh. Oh look, dead they guy. murdered a guy. He but gets up. He, the, they he make pops a point. up. At, yeah, yeah. They make a point to show him stand up. That actually might have been my favorite part, where Cameron Diaz picks her head back up and she's like, "Oh, are you okay?" And Christina's like, "Yeah, no, yep." yep. Christina <laughs> Applegate is actually going, "Shit, shit, <laughs> shit." This is like, like this is what I'm saying. Like, there are funny parts, sure, right? but like, the parts that they want to be funny are not the ones that are funny. <laughs> No, I'm sure that was like intended to be funny, and I'm sure the fucking semen at the dry cleaner was meant to be funny and all that shit. But like, the, again, just misfires, right? Like yeah. every, like every sixth bullet is a fucking hit, and then the, the would other you say five. they were shooting blanks? Now the pig got. I, I just I I ha cha 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 cha. I want a good one, Matt. Thanks. So. Uh, they go to Somerset. It's the cutest I want you to know. Town. I want yeah. you to know that in editing, I'm gonna cut that down to just being me saying, "Would you say they're shooting blanks?" And you just going, "Good one, Matt." <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um. So they go to Somerset. 
Oh, one of the bets I was going to have for this movie was, do you bet there's a montage? And there was a montage. Yeah, but they see, go to here's my question about it. Because yeah. they call it a montage themselves. Right. If you address it, is it still a montage? I don't know, Matt. Was it still a fucking montage? Yes, yeah, of course it was a montage. montage. What a stupid question. What a d- you know what? We're friends. Hey, being we're friends. Mean. We're friends. So hey, we're friends. It's fine. Like you're being mean. It's fine. Mm. Uh, but they do a, a dress up montage, which on one hand, like sure, every one of these movies has pr- pretty much had it. But on the other hand, like they were getting, they were in this weird dress shop looking for dresses for this wedding that they were going to, but everything that they got dressed into for the montage was movie clothes. Right. They were, well, they were costumes. They were it costumes. Wasn't, it they wasn't like they costumes? were trying on different dresses for the wedding or right. something. They were trying on different costumes. And specifically, like, they're doing movie costumes. So Elaborate like, looks. Right. So they do, like, the two of them do Harry and, um, oh, I can't even think of the other person's name. Harry and from Dumb Lloyd. and Dumber. Harry and Lloyd from Dumb and Dumber. Um, uh, Grease. Grease and, and Flash Dance. But my problem with the Flash Dance one is it's a ratty sweatshirt that's pre-sweated upon. The back is soaking yeah, wet already. I don't understand yeah. that one at all. Uh, they do Madonna. They do Madonna. Well. And then what do they do? Oh, they do Pretty Woman. They our reenact. First episode. They reenact the box laugh. The scene where they close the box the, laugh. The close, it's got a name. The boxing. The box uh, with the necklace in it closing on her hand and her going. Ah! <laughs> they actually reenact it too much. They do it like a they lot. They do it like a couple of times. It's weird. I don't know. Also, that woman who's the owner of the dress shop is in fucking everything. She is. She plays like the older lady in Who everything. Who doesn't quite get things? She plays like the older lady shopkeep in yeah. a lot of stuff. Right. Uh, librarian number two. Oh, have you seen my IMDb? I was librarian number two. <laughs> and <laughs> I was shopkeep number four. Uh, yeah, I hated that montage. Just because, again, it was like there, f- there were so many scenes in this movie where it was like, well, it, we got to stretch this out. It was really, really <laughs> absurd, and I think again, I honestly, I think it was like for time. Yeah, I, so I like that the dance number, the fucking the 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 penis song, yeah. right? Like that was like three and a half minutes long. Yeah, I think I think a lot like, of it was like we really got to stretch this out. Would have been just as like if 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 people found it funny, they would have found it just as funny if it was one minute long. Sure, agreed. Um, same thing with like this dress scene, the montage thing. But the whole thing is just a build up to her putting her name on the mailing list, right? Which which they focus on way too much to make it not, not a, important, right? Right? They're right. like, "Well, do you want to put the, like Cameron Diaz has already left the shop?" And she's like, "Do you want to put your name on the mailing list?" And she was like, "You know what? I really do." And I was like, "Oh, this is obviously going to come back." Actually, Christina Applegate puts her name on the mailing list, right? And, and you don't see what she writes until the end when he's in the store, conveniently. And well, because he, he lives in and Somerset. He's, and he's like, yeah, I'll put my name on, this, on the mailing list, which is like, he has no reason to put his name on the mailing list. He's not buying dresses at a dress store. Like, right. The, the reasoning is, oh, oh, Peter, you're leaving town. Would you like to put your name on the mailing list? And right. then Jason Bateman even goes, I've been trying to get our names off the mailing list. So why right. would he have to put and it down like, again? Sign me up. Yeah. Uh, and then he sees that Christina Applegate actually wrote christina hearts peter and then wrote their address and by christina he doesn't mean christina applegate he means christina the character played by cameron diaz which is confusing christina walter she's a heartbreaker everyone she's a knows heartbreaker. It. everyone talks about that it entire time. opening montage by the way can we talk about that for one second because it was insane well so there's a there's like the text open and it's like and yeah tell us about christina walter also like who's making this fucking documentary of her life <laughs> You're not real. Right? She's like a like a twenty eight year old person like like who is of no no notoriety or fame as far as we're aware. And it's like, hey. Tell so when some... did you first meet Christina Walters? And it just it starts out with this one guy who's like at the gym and he's like, Oh yeah, we we went out once. It was it was she was pretty cool. She's great. She's the kind of girl she can get any guy she wants. She was so cool. She was really great. You and know? then it just escalates exponentially There's for the next five minutes. Weirdo guy singing a song. The one guy with the nosebleed. One guy who's like very sensitive with a nosebleed. Who's like, I just don't know why she didn't call. She should have just called. If she could have just called me, that would have been great. And then I'm sure she had a reason for not calling. And then there was the one really aggressive guy who kept insisting that she was a lesbian because she didn't call him. So, dude, that was. Can I tell you 
it was really offensive and upsetting it was up until rough. the very end where a bunch of women beat him with bats. And I was like, oh, okay, so fine. This, this was my <laughs> this is my first, like, clue that this movie was going to have, like... Was really, a little too much. Really absurdist, like, misfire-type fucking things. The, where, like, the movie was a cartoon. So, so he, like, he's like, because she must have been a lesbian. And then at, some, at one point he's like... I'm just overcompensating. I'm sure she just wasn't into me, and that's okay. Like, I don't have to assume. I'm sorry. I assume My fragile male was. ego was My bruised. My fragile male ego was bruised, whatever, right? And then he's like, fuck that. Maybe she is into girls, because that's the only reason she wouldn't like me, right? And it's like, it's this whole t- super offensive thing. And then a bunch of women appear with bats and start beating the shit out of him. I actually kind of loved it. <laughs> I laughed, but I was also like, oh, that's what this movie is. Oh, oh, it's going to be it's a cartoon. kind of movie. Yeah, it's a it cartoon. Felt, it felt like a cartoon. It felt like a cartoon. A lot of this movie felt like it felt like game. Bugs Bunny was blowing that guy up with dynamite, and then he was like <laughs> alive and fine, but also like hurt. Yeah, you know, like there were some slight, slight consequences there. I don't know. I didn't. I um, that whole opening scene. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, There's a it, lot. Yeah, did I? I wasn't. I wasn't. I, wasn't I, w- I wasn't a fan. Um, I don't know what else. Um, so we could do bet. <sighs> You won the bet. I she did win the up, bet. She ends up with Tom Jane. I did win the bet. I didn't won the bet. I win the bet. No, I'm. I said you won the bet, and, and I then said, you I, said I, I did, did won the I bet. I did done won the bet. Yeah, it's late. It's, it's very late. late. It's not that late. It's so late. It's not that late. Don't, don't do this to us. But it is a school night anyway. Don't so Matt won the us. bet. Matt's gonna pick the movie for next week. Hopefully, it's something not terrible. But like, I don't know how much worse than this it could be for us. But. You know, what are we going to do? Well, uh, let's talk about how, the, how how bad it was. Okay. Like, Hey, hit me. Hey. Do we, do we want to talk about the Roddy Tomatoes first, or do we want to do in our rankings? Um, I want to do Roddy Tomatoes. All right, let's look at Roddy Tomatoes real so quick. So what did Roddy Tomatoes think of All right, this? so the, tom- the tomato meter, the, t- the tom- tomometer. Which is the critic which score. Which is the critic score. Is twenty six percent, which honestly, I'm I'm there. I'm I'm with it. I get it. I might give it slightly higher, but at like maybe a thirty three percent. Like I okay. might give it a third. A nice third. Yeah. Um, the audience score. Yeah. Quite a bit higher. What do you got? Sixty five percent. See, that's, that's insane. To I under. Me. But like, I'm telling you, you've known people. I've known people. I, like, like. Uh, the sweetest thing? Oh, the sweetest thing is great. What it's the not. Fuck? It's not mind blowing that it is that high because, like, I again, you're right. I do know people who love this movie. It's mind blowing that anyone likes this movie. Right. This might be one of the uh, like biggest gaps between critic score and audience scores that I think we've had in any it's of the movies that we've done so far. It's very significant. I actually, we should we should look back and check at some point because this this honestly like that's Maybe. a. We can we can it's look almost back a fifty percent deficit. Deficit, yeah. We can look back. We'll post something on the Instagram, maybe with a little chart or something. You're gonna make a chart? No, you're gonna make a chart. You're gonna make a chart. Okay, bye. What's one third of fifty? Why do you do this to us? <laughs> <laughs> you're doing it to both of us. Um, do you want to you want to rank it? So here's what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. What are you thinking? Because we are at. 16, 16 now, you know right? 15 was a huge number for us okay so how about we say like didn't you think that maybe for 16 we should have done 16 candles fuck off <laughs> yeah maybe hindsight's 2020 you dick oh uh, yes that would have been perfect that would have been perfect think of the ads we could have put on tnt and tbs and fucking like really set it up for usa maybe who maybe knows even, uh, we don't have usa money no. <laughs> we don't have the usa don't money ridiculous so um i don't i don't think we need to do our whole list anymore no it's a okay? lot why don't we do where would you put it like what would you put it between what are those numbers like so the one before sure. the one after it and then maybe stay what your number one is and what your last one is still. I think that's fair. Okay, go ahead. So I would put this movie. Oh God! Did you hear that motorcycle just rode by. Um, I certainly under Pretty in Pink. Certainly under Enchanted. Definitely under She's the Man. Definitely under Spice World. Under She's the Man, huh? Yeah. Um. Uh, Fuck. Okay. I will tell you, I will put this movie 
between Spice World and Crossroads. Wow. Loved Spice World more than this. I'm not saying liked. He loved Spice World more than this. No. He loved it, guys. You know what? Never you mind. Guys, no, 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 no. Hey, no. Guys, you can't take it back. He I, said between I Spice World and Crossroads. Can. I'm writing hey, it down. Withdrawn. It's in stone. Withdrawn. This is now between She's the Man and Spice World. Wow. Yeah. It's not to spite you. I just had a second to reconsider. Like to spite with me. your banter, with your adorable banter, you gave me an extra moment to reconsider. And it's between She's the Man and Spice World. Okay. So that would be number? It'll be number 11 now. Okay. And uh, So She's the Man is above it. So She's the Man is number uh, 10. 10. This will be 11. Spice World will be 12. Uh, my last movie now will be. And forever be. Made in Manhattan. Yeah, I think Made in Manhattan for sure is is uh. And what's number one for you, Garrett? While you were sleeping, he really loves it. Can we talk about real quick before I do my ranking that yeah. there was a connection between this movie and Made in Manhattan? Oh yes, there was. Okay, they use the same joke, same gag. Although this movie came out before Made in Manhattan, I believe. I, I think believe Made in Manhattan so, yes. was two thousand three or two thousand five. We'll find out. Keep Maybe going. Two thousand seven. I don't fucking know, but I know it was after two thousand two. Um. At one point, Cameron Diaz sits down on a on like a bus bench, and um, she's two. T- oh, Made in Manhattan was two also. Wow, same year, yeah. same gag, same year, huh? Ooh. So Oof. she's sitting down on a bench, and she like moves to the side, I guess, a little bit, and Christina Applegate's like, "You're sitting on his face because his face, he's a realtor, and his face is on the the bus bench." So she's like, "Oh, you're sitting on his face." And at one point in Made Manhattan, she sits down on Time Magazine or whatever that has his face on the cover, and she's like, "Ooh, I, I just, sat on your I face." I sat on your face, and it's fine. It's just and lowest it's, common and, denominator, and it's fine. You no, know, here's the thing: like, that's a funny joke, is it? If you give a shit about the context or the characters of the movie, okay. I just didn't really. No one did. None of those boxes were checked off <laughs> in this case. So in either like, case, not for me. Not you know? for me. Not for me. Um, where do you put it? Um, hmm. Hmm is right. It's tough because I really hated this fucking movie. But did I hate it more than like nothing movies is the question. Well, all right. Let me ask. Did you hate it more than Crossroads? Tantrum, Ben, and all. Yeah. I'm going to say I didn't hate it more than Crossroads. I'm going to say it's probably number 13 for me. I think it, I think. Where would that put it? Okay. I think it goes um, Crossroads, What Women Want, This, Blue Crush, and then uh, Made in Manhattan. So you did hate it more than Crossroads. Yeah. Is that not what I said? You said, I I don't think, I think I didn't hate it more than Crossroads. I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. I I, I don't think I hated Crossroads as much as I hated this is what I meant. Okay. So what is directly above this and what is directly after this? So directly above this would be What Women Want and directly below this would be Blue Crush. Okay. And then your last one is Made in Manhattan. Correct. So this is within your bottom five. It's within my bottom three. Wow. Yeah. Um, So my top movie is- Yeah. What's your number one now still? Is still Devil, Devil Wears Prada. Andy Sachs. It's a good movie. It is a really good movie. I enjoy myself every time I watch it. I I don't agree. It's my number two. Yeah, Madonna montage, Matt. We get it. We haven't had a good Madonna montage in a long time. Tell me about it. Long overdue. Uh, I need it. Speaking of Madonna montage, I think one of the last things we haven't touched upon is soundtrack. Uh, The soundtrack was, I mean, it was extensive. There were a and lot more of songs. So, yeah, there was a lot of songs, more so in the last than the last few movies we've watched. So we had, um, what did we have? We had the movie opened with a Macy Gray song. Yeah, I think it was called Sexual Revolution, but I believe I that's what it was called as well. I can't be. I, I, can't I thought be you wrote either. these down. Mm, no way. Mm, to no, mm. no one could ever know. Mm, no way to possibly. Uh, basically, know. there's just a lot of songs. There's Ben Folds. There's uh, Ben Folds. There's Smash Mouth. Smash Mouth. Uh, oh a, man, when they're in the club, Jamiroquai. Jamiroquai. Jamiroquai on. plays. It's great. It's great, baby. That was my Seinfeld. Yeah, I was gonna say, was that your Seinfeld impression? Yeah, uh, yeah losing losing Lisa by Ben Folds, um, Smash Mouth. Oh, and there's that Usher song. Oh okay. yeah, uh, you got it bad. You got it bad. You it's got a, it. You got it bad. That's a good song. That's all right. That's a good. That's a fine that's song. A, that's a good song. Hey, that's a song. Um, yeah, I mean, I I didn't dislike the soundtrack. Nothing like that. 
meant anything to me, but I recognized some songs and I certainly recognized some And artists. then, of course, you know, there was the famous um, Don't Want to Miss a Thing by um, Aerosmith. Oh, my God. Let's talk about that scene for one yeah, second. Yeah, because we didn't talk about so it at all. So towards the end, they Not go... Not towards the I think it was, it was like... It was within the last five, ten minutes. Yeah, fair. So just about at the end of the movie, they go back to the apartment. And the whole thing is like that Selma Blair's rebound guy has a huge penis. I mean, good for him. Hey, brother. Must be nice. Hey, <laughs> brother. So uh, they go back to the apartment and there's like a cop sitting outside looking like he's seen a murder scene. He's seen he's some like, shit. You shouldn't go up there. There's no way to warn you for what's going to, what you're going to see. Which is also hilarious to me because like, how are they not just like, don't go up there. This is a, pl- this is a, a like a, a crime scene, well, which is not a crime but scene. But then they go up to their apartment and there are literally 50 people in their apartment. Of, of all races, it's, genders, it's, and creeds. It's the village people. There's <laughs> yeah. like a nurse, a construction worker, a bunch of cops, ambulance technicians. Oh, and, like, and fucking like, Rabbit from uh, the Rabbit Club from Dread. Rabbit Super Troopers yeah. and Club Dread. The fucking hysteria. The Broken Lizard. The broken, that's right? what I meant. The Broken Lizard. Uh, so, so they go up there and uh, Selma Blair's mouth is caught on this guy's penis. I don't think her mouth is caught. It's it's, it's her tonsils her, are caught on oh, his piercing, which which is fucking gr- which fucking gross, horrifying. Yeah, that's gross. Oh my god, why is it what not is, for me? So they're like, if you sing, and again, they're just like, let's just wedge a fucking music number in here. <laughs> if you sing, maybe your throat it'll will relax. relax your throat. Are which, you? Just I'm not sure that's how that works. Drugged? Who did this? Who wrote this? I need to know who thought this script was good, like. Green light it now. Yeah. The shit that goes down in this movie is just fucking horrifying. So, like worse than some of the teen like comedies that came out around so this time. So they sing uh Aerosmith, uh, don't, don't want to miss a thing. thing. And the whole fifth like fifth literally no exaggeration, fifty people in the apartment start singing it in chorus. And then like her mouth loosens up and relaxes and it comes off of the guy's like junk. Pres- presumably some sort of Prince Albert scenario or something horrifying, but like some weird What's genital piercing. His what? Oh, like a Prince Albert. What's that? You tell me what a glory hole is first, and then I'll tell you what a... Moving on. Just a little so, tit for tit. Tit for uh, tat for tit. tit tat. Yeah, moving I on. I hate you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's even fucking... Oh, my yeah. God. And that's pretty much that's the much. end of the movie, that's too. That's almost which... the end of the movie, too. Um... Did this movie, movie sucks. Did this movie die? I don't think so, because I think it was on HBO like last month. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what. It deserved to die. I fucking hate this. I think it kind of deserves to die, too, but I feel like it has like a cult following, so I feel like it'll get... It'll 65% get of audiences will agree with you. There you go. That's more than half, I think. Right? Yeah? Yeah, Matt. I feel like you're more making than half. it. I feel like you're making it awkward. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think this movie does. You think this movie belongs in the genre? Uh, yeah, I mean, yes. I think it is smack dab there. It's right yeah. in the middle. I think it's like cruder than a lot of movies you'll see in this genre. And well, I, I kind of feel like they really went for it. Yeah, I mean, and the thing is also like, I think a lot of the crude humor. I think it's very honest because I'm sure that this is like. To some degree, like, these are conversations that women might have. Sure. And, like, there are certainly women that are this direct about, like, sex and hookups and all this other shit. And, like, I think that's fine. And I think that might be some of, like, why this movie is, like, accessible. Because it's like, oh, that's, like, they're not fucking sugarcoating all of it. Like, here is, you know, girls are talking about dick size or whatever the fuck else. Like, or they're talking about, like, um... Being direct is one thing. Being no, this it, is a whole other thing. Well, no, I mean like things like the musical number and shit, like are just like they were a little like egregious, too much, too much for me. But egregious, I can see like the access point, right? I can see where people might get into it and be like, oh, you know, that's actually funny. I like it for X, Y, and Z, whatever. Um, I don't think it has died. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind if it did die. I I'd think really it does love belong. It died. I does. Uh, it obviously belongs in the genre. Um. I don't know, man. So Matt's going to pick the next movie because he won the bet. And hopefully, you know, it's something we can stay awake through and fucking <laughs> not gouge our eyes out or not vomit. From Are you trying to imply that movies that I've picked in the past, you couldn't stay awake through? Yeah. But I'd also, I have a but, really specific request. If the next movie that you pick could specifically not have a glory hole scene, <laughs> I would Garrett, really appreciate it. You don't it. even know what a glory hole is. I know it's bad. Yeah. You're not wrong. I know I saw a penis for a split second on film. Surprise. So. <laughs> Ho-ho. Ho-ho. Surprise. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, anyway, I think that's it, Matt. You got anything else? 
No. All right. So that's it for this episode. If you want to find us at DGOCF uh, on Twitter, at Drunk Eyes on Chick Flicks on Instagram, Facebook, fuck Facebook, Facebook is at Drunk Eyes. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Drunk Eyes on Chick Flicks at gmail.com. If you want to shoot us an email, no one has ever sent us an email. Well, we've gotten emails before, just like not from things that aren't bots or i don't want wayfair coupons matt stop forwarding me those wayfair coupons i just feel like you should have something nice i feel like we should have something nice. this conversation is why we can't have nice things this should happen off there anyway thanks so much for listening check us out next time and have a wonderful day night evening see you later bye goodbye